Right, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Healing Conversations. My name is Einav Avni with Untangled Coaching, and with me today, Claire Williamson. Hello, Claire. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. So nice to have you here. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about you. Yes, so I'm known as the Soul Goal Coach, and I've been coaching since about 2016, but my business definitely didn't go in a straight line to success. Um, I spent about three years really hustling in my business and finally broke through actually in, in COVID when I really um, got clear on who I wanted to help and how I wanted to help them. So spent the last couple of years, um, yeah, the last couple of years helping people with social media, helping them to, to share their story and get engagement from the people turn basically turn following into cash but as we were saying just before um that got a little bit out of alignment for me and my true soul goal so in february this year i decided to pivot and i'm now working um in transformational coaching i'm calling it um how, how do you create awakened wealth we can all make money but how do we do it in a way that does truly align to our soul goal does truly make an impact and really um hits all your own personal desires as well the influence that you want the thought leadership and also the freedom that you want to have by having a business at all mm -hmm. and you touched on so many different things that totally resonate with me like and of course some of my clients as well like how how do you a lot of people will say, I'm I'm kind of stuck in where I am. I don't know. I want to move. I want to do something else. But I'm at this job that pays the bills. And I don't know how, how to move forward, how to act, actually, just like you said, how to get back into alignment because the needs are so, uh, you know, so, so um, profound. <laughs> so that, um, so yeah, so people really get stuck with this idea of how, how to move forward. So how, how do you do that? How do you get into alignment and find this trust that things are going to work out and that you're going to, to make it? You, you just named it, trust. You have to be willing to lose everything to gain what you want. And that's why any sort of step up, level up, pivot, it all comes from you and it has to be an inner, inner journey because you've got to identify where you lost that trust, whether it's in mm. yourself and it 99% and it of the time is coming from our own lack of trust in ourselves. Because we then look outside into the world and, and then we see through the lens of that distrust. And then we say that we don't trust these things on the outside. We don't trust, you know, the money coming in or we don't trust this over here, but it really does come from that lack of trust in ourselves, right? So we have to we have to work on that. And I'd say since February, I've taken my own personal development to just another another level to be able to have that trust. And that is where you find the flow. When you have the trust, you have the flow because you can fully be in each moment and you can fully trust that whatever you're doing in it, even if that's just being in that moment completely, it's all on purpose. And you know, you, you're guided, you're held, you're supported. We're always looking for these supports outside of ourselves. I had this wild experience this year where I invested 50K into, it was the biggest investment I've made into coaching so far. And I did it because I knew I wanted to pivot. I knew I wanted to change my messaging, but nobody could take this feeling I had inside into words. And I was getting frustrated. I was getting more than, and I was feeling like you've just wasted all this money. Nobody can help you to verbalize and communicate this business that you want to have, this result that you want to create and how you create it. Mm. And, and the more frustrated I got, the more I was forced into a corner and that corner backed me into this realization that I've always searched for that external validation. Right. I am a coach. I believe we should all have coaches, even if it's just for that mirror that reflection back of what the thing is that is really holding you back, your pattern. We all have these patterns. They're always unconscious. And to, to realize like you've never trusted your own, your own truth. You've never trusted your own words. You've spent all this time helping people to get visible and you're not even visible in a way that feels aligned. So, you know, like what, what's that about Claire? 
and I, I really was, um, yeah, I really, whew, I really went back. I went back to childhood. A lot of my healing has focused on, I was raped in 2004 and a lot of my healing had been around that experience. But what I realized was that that experience manifested from a place of powerlessness that I already believed I had and I was, and that that went way back into childhood. And I did this incredible, um, I was on a retreat and we did this visualization of looking back at versions of yourself in childhood. So I think it was the four-year-old child, the eight-year-old child, the 12-year-old child, the 16-year-old child. And I had this profound realization that I'd never, I'd never connected really with her pain and I'd never really acknowledged and accepted that by the time she was 11 years old, she'd already lost all of that power and she'd already really lost trust in the world as well, you know, and I grieved after that experience. I spent a long time really allowing all those feelings to come up and and allowing myself to be vulnerable to the fact that I've always been very outward about how I fought, you know, I call myself a recovered survivor because I had that, I had, I had chronic anxiety. I've always had this tenacity that I was never going to let it get me. I was never going to let it get me. And that's no way to, to live through life because you're not thriving. You're just surviving. So Mm. I'd already sort of allowed that masculine side to, to quieten down a little bit um, and stop surviving. and, And I understand how I thrive in my life. But this just took it all to another level, that vulnerability, that that feminine nurturing that I didn't really know how to allow within me because I didn't have that level of trust. Mm. And this year I found it. And I believe as a business CEO, as somebody who has a business and wants to help other people, that's that's a, it's a missing element. And we have to find it because that always brings the power back to ourselves, always. We can do anything. We can believe that, okay, business could completely stop on Monday and I'll wake up on Tuesday and I will start again. I can do anything. I can truly do anything. And I am supported to do everything when I'm working in my highest power for my highest good. I got so connected to what I want to do with my business. You know, like I say, that awakened wealth, like I had money last year, had lots of money. Mm. Was I fulfilled with that money? No, because all of my all of my personal values had kind of fallen out of place. I'd been playing to some limiting beliefs that I hadn't even seen around money. So, you, you know, the, this healing journey that we're on, it's always evolving. We're never done, I don't think. And I realized it was so beautiful. The name of my company is Claire Williamson, Full Circle. And I'd always felt that, that we kind of, we go around these these loops and and, and this year I understood, I saw it in myself, how we do take those circles around the same thing and we just d- more deeply understand them. And mm-hmm. that's how we rise. That's how we rise in consciousness. And when we're rising in consciousness, everything is becoming easier. We're becoming more able to always be detached and an observer of everything that we're going through, not wrapped up in all the emotions that we're still healing from the past, but with clarity and vision and authority and alignment to just always be able to navigate through whatever's going on in our life and business with much more strength and dignity. Yeah. And I, th- I think you, you, you're you describing something, it's, it's so beautiful because a lot, of, a lot of the time people really are in the struggle. They want, they wish, they, they dream but they don't really know how to get to, to where they want to be. And, and so they're kind of recycling their fears and, and their doubts and the insecurities and the limiting beliefs. And here you are actually saying, basically, I'm not saying you arrived, but you definitely took that journey. And it, you definitely realize that, you know, if you want to change, you have to change from the core and, and not allow these insecurities and fears to, to gain the way because otherwise you always stay where you are. Right. And so it's so beautiful and encouraging, although definitely I hear how hard work it was uh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to to get through this barrier of actually this is where I am. This is where I want to be and how, how I'm actually going to get there. So it's it's like a beautiful uh, account of 
this is a possibility and what you need to do, you know, what one might want to do in the way, basically to trust, but also to allow for things to to be introduced. We need to let go of who we think we are before we can become that version of ourselves that we want to be. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I had a, I had a period in, it must have been, so I made the decision in February. By March or April, I was literally standing there going, who the hell am I? Who, who am I? Like, I was nobody for a while there because, you know, you have to peel off again. This this successful business had put another identity upon me that I suddenly was realizing was not my truth. And I had to go back. Not only did I have to go back to the drawing board around, um, you know, messaging, marketing, all of the competitor research, I had to go back to the drawing board of me and remember myself again. And, and that self-discovery, I realized, it's a three-part process because we discover we connect then we have to acknowledge that it that all of those things are okay all of those parts of our of us are absolutely fine and beautiful however eccentric or different they are to what you you see Mm. and then you have this embodiment phase where it's like okay well now i have to start walking in those trousers and wearing those shoes and make them comfortable which is that 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 practice and habit. And I think that's where we fall down in business so much is consistency around everything, whether it's showing up on social media every day, whether it's uh, putting a piece of live content out every week, whether it's um, getting in the, the direct messengers or whether it's getting up in the morning and doing the ritual. That's where we fall down is consistency. And that comes from our limiting beliefs, our operating system, our identity, all of those past experiences that we've had and we haven't healed or we haven't rewired them to align with who we truly are because we don't know who we truly are. We're still stuck in the identity of what we've become from those experiences. And, you know, and then you sit in that place of desire and, and people want the law of attraction to work. Everybody's, you know, wanting to manifest and they're manifesting these desires, but it's the desire that actually stops them from manifesting because their identity lacks trust and they can't yeah. let go of the desire. They can't let it go and trust that it's coming. It's, you know, they're attached and they're focused on the how. And when you're focused on the how, you're in the wrong part of your brain to be creative and in flow. You're like exactly what you just said. You're, you're recycling all the old fears, recycling all of the old insecurities, creating from everything that you know. And the power is to start creating from the unknown to start being able to dance in that unknown with wild excitement, you know. I had no idea where money was coming in for a good three months. No idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I literally said, right, I don't want to bring these people into my programs. And I'm not entirely sure who I do want to bring in. So I've got to, I've got to pull back. And as soon as I pulled back and I let go and I just said, you know, everything's going to be okay. I started to see these these like crazy things happening and it was like bills just like disappeared contractors just decided to walk away they were like we don't want to work with you anymore I'm like sweet I can't really pay you right now either it was like you know um I had people resign to my programs without even having to ask the question I had um uh like what else sort of things happened that were just ah uh, Network marketing that I've still got in the background just took off by itself and I had passive incomes coming in. Old affiliates I'd signed up to started just turning over in the background. So my my income, it didn't it didn't change, you know, mm. in terms of income expense. Like it there was this wild phase where it was just it was just sorting itself out. And I've always said that that if you focus on the vision, the universe will sort out the rest. Those doors will open, those doors will close in alignment with your feelings, your focus. And that's where people get stuck. They get stuck on the how. They're like, right, okay, they have this, this minuscule moment where they're like, I want this thing over here. And then they go straight into how do I manuf manufacture and construct that? How do, I, how do I decide how that happens? Whereas we have to go into the flow of, I'm going to allow that creative inspiration to come to me. And what came to me was this um, low ticket program. I'd not sold a load, I'd not created a low ticket program in two years. And I created this um, Awakened Wealth Blueprint, which was my understanding from the, the previous 12 months, that healing process, that um, deciding I was going to pivot, basically going back to the drawing board mm. of starting again 
and remembering what it takes to start again, not just strategically, but from that trans transformation place as well, being the person that is creating that income, having that trust, having that belief. And I created this blueprint on a low ticket, on a beta, and it flew, it flew out the door. And, you know, it's it, it's just been so interesting to find that that state of flow from, from such, you know, you could say struggle and turmoil if you look at it from that perspective. But what I had was creative chaos. What I had was this beautiful unknown, this opportunity to just let go. And what has manifested has been inc incredibly beautiful, incredibly aligned and incredibly ex exciting. And the thing is, is, this is a very interesting point because again, a lot of the time it's, it's really, what am I going to do? I've, and you know, I've done everything or I've thought about everything and I've tried and I, you know, but actually, as you said, when we think in this way, we are still in the, in the fear, in the lack, in the trying to take control of, over something that actually we have no control over. But it's, it's also quite, um, I think it, it feels like it's quite a big step to, you know, to come from what is it that I need to do to make things happen to where you are at, which is in the most beautiful place of I trust and I just, you know, things really manifest. So we're not um, hoping or we're not in the lack or in the need. We're actually in the allowing and the abundance. Um, and it, it sounds like such a beautiful place to, to be. So so it's really interesting for me because I think in, even for me, I mean, uh, since we spoke last time, uh, I also changed my my focus a little bit. I was um, more working with people about confidence and empowerment, and now I've decided to take that into more specifically make that around the chronic pain, chronic illness, and, and stuff like that. Wow! Um, and and now it's that question of, so what do I do? <laughs> you know how how do I make this? Uh, how do I bring this message to the to the world? What do I need to do more? Of? Um, so it is, I definitely recognize that I'm not where you are, you know, I'm, I'm still in the, how do I make it? How do I do it? What, what is it that I, yeah, as you said, I'm still in the how. So I love hearing what you're saying that actually it is not so much about that. The creative chaos sounds like actually like heaven, uh, and especially that you, you're actually getting some of the results that, you know, that, that makes sense. And, you know, and that's the most beautiful thing, right? Because we are guided. We, when you're, when you're a force for good, you know, when I think you're like me and probably you're, you know, whoever's watching this is probably exactly the same, right? It's like you feel it etched into your soul that you're here on purpose. And if you were to leave this earth and you were to not have made that impact that feels so etched into your DNA, you will have regrets. And... I guess last year, I mean, what what happened last year was that I was in this misaligned place. I was I was burning out. I was um, operating from these limiting beliefs. I'd hit multiple six figures or I'd hit six figures, I think. And I was like, how do I scale to multiple six figures? Mm -hmm. And it felt like I had to do what I was doing like times 10. I, I basically have to do more of this stuff that's working instead of understanding that it's it was a different it's a diff, it's completely different you know six to multiple six figures six, multiple six figures to seven figures you have to change how you do things you do strategically mm. um and I, I didn't quite get that i think and i was running these these limiting beliefs and i was trying to juggle being a mum and i had a sick child and i got tired and i actually left my dog in the car I didn't realize that he was in there and he over overheated and he, he died. And, you know, he, he, he was like, he was, we, we've always tried for a son. <laughs> we've got three girls and, and he was our son, you know, and, and the grief, um, the grief of that experience was, was very overwhelming, but there was one thing that saved me. And that was my own, my own quantum. I call it the quantum leap me method. And it's actually a coaching certification. I take coaches through now to help them to get faster results with their clients by working on this, this inner stuff alongside the strategy. And I followed that process to the, to the letter. And it starts with understanding, understanding who you, you truly are, 
away from those limiting beliefs. That 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 experience brought up a very deep um, wound for me, which was from childhood. I have or ha- have she's still bipolar, but she she's had mental illness. My mum, my whole life, and so she never coped with the world at all, and which mm. really meant that she didn't cope with me. And that made me fear creativity. That made me fear just letting things go and just being in flow because I was always, whatever I did, I was always wrong and I was always punished for it. I made bad choices from, that's how it felt, you know, from the perception of a child being yelled at, smacked, whatever. It's like, I was always wrong. And I opened the car door and when I saw Benson, that's what reverberated through my body it was physical it wasn't it wasn't a mind thing it was physical this is you Claire you get things wrong you never make good decisions you always have bad choices you're broken and I was able to really see that limiting belief and say is that true is that how I want to live the rest of my life believing that I'm always the one that's in the wrong Mm -hmm. I never have authority I never make good choices am I going to run my business from this limiting belief as well or am I going to learn like find out who who I truly am and, and learn new ways, new empowering beliefs. And I followed this, this quantum leap method absolute to the letter. And it was funny because it wasn't, that wasn't my choice. I had a client when I was really, really, really struggling, phone me on messenger and say, Claire, you can, you can, you can get through this. You've, you've taught us how. And I literally lit, heard what she said and I was like, oh my God, like, and I went to this this ritual. I went to living my life in ritual and following this method. And that was when, you know, earlier this year when I, I went wanted to design um, a low ticket program, I actually used the method and I put the, the strategy and the transformation together. And for anybody who is wanting to scale or start, start or scale, you follow these steps. Mm-hmm. It's the steps I've taken and I've proven again, they work. I'm in business. I'm flourishing. I'm thriving. I'm uh, This time I'm aligned. And before Christmas or by Christmas, I'm going to be revealing the new brand and the new direction and the new impact. And I'm really excited about it. And I want to help other people. I want to help more people. That was what I realized in February that coaching the way that I was coaching with only the high ticket, only the access for the the people who um, were doing really well already Mm -hmm. or who could trust to take that jump. I was leaving people behind and it didn't feel good. I wanted to be able to help specifically the change makers, you know, not everybody, the change maker, the person with that soul goal etched in their, their, their DNA, maybe not even clear of exactly what that looks like when they radically express themselves through their business. Because I think we can say that we express some of ourselves, but do we radically express who we truly are and what we truly want to change in the world? No, we hold back. We've got fear. Yeah, you know, we say, oh, well, you know, there's nobody else that out there doing it or, you know, um, I don't know how to describe it or can I really say the thing? Like I want everybody to say the damn thing and do the damn thing and actually start making change in those areas that we feel will create that new world that we're all craving. We are those creators. Mm-hmm. And to, to create, we have to be able to dance in the unknown and allow the inspiration to come through and, and, and be playful. I got my playfulness back this year you know I I let go of that fear of creativity and I let go of the fear of being wrong and and decided actually being wrong doesn't exist being right doesn't exist being aligned and on purpose is the only thing that is important Mm -hmm. and when you can let go of those fears and relax suddenly you can implement those strategies powerfully you can stay consistent in them because it's always the same thing isn't it (laughs) everybody's doing this all those successful people they're all doing the same thing but they're doing it from a place of confidence and peace and clarity Mm. and you only get that when you switch that survival mind off (laughs) yeah i love that um so we're just nearly coming to the end of the conversation although it seems like we i feel like we could have spent hours here Uh, (laughs) uh, did you want to share with us a little bit about the app or i know yes so um, aligned with that goal of reaching more people i did um launch an app it's in its beta phase it's called the awakened wealth app and what you get there for free are the methods that I used when I lost my dog to go into that ritual to be able to connect with my own creativity and and and, and you know we think we think healing is is a conscious thing 
but actually a lot of healing is just done within your body and it's a mind body thing this is the thing that i realized you know we can't just we can't just do the mindset work we can't even just do the subconscious reprogramming we have to go into our body and we have to allow the body to heal as well and the nervous system is such a huge part of that and so these are seven neurosomatic rituals which means it's mind body and they're seven minutes long just seven minutes long you can choose to do one two three a day and put yourself into that beautiful place of peace and self-connection but i recommend actually learning to do the seven methods seven times a day so you're doing seven methods in total seven rituals seven times a day for seven minutes it's not even an hour and that's what a lot of the people who have come along this journey with me with the app when i challenge them they're like i don't have time i'm like how are you spending you know an hour a day scrolling your phone you know doing things for other people doing things that aren't aligned like get back in touch with yourself and everything will change and so we've seen some epic results coming out of out of the community um a guy had been um he'd been struggling with this real estate project it died he got into doing the ritual he did it for seven days and this um real estate project re-resurrected re itself 25k win and he said it's because it is because of what was coming from me claire energetically you know i was transforming and so everything on the outside started to shift as well and that's what we see right we're all mm -hmm. trying to change all these things out here on the outside but if we change on the inside everything will start to align i'm proof of that and i'm going to start sharing that story way more loudly because i believe in that higher consciousness when we start to let go and we start to have that that high vibration and that love you know more love and less fight then mm -hmm. we're going to start solving some of these problems in the world they'll, they'll just go away so I would love for people to connect with the app. I can connect you to a, a link. It's absolutely free. Jump in. We're building the community behind it so that you're supported. Um, mm. And there's access to other resources through the app as well. Wonderful. And and so this is in one of the links that we're going to share after, after this call? Yeah, I can yeah. share it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Lovely. Well, Claire, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your wisdom and to show it, showing us really that we, it is it is possible we can let go of, of some of these things that are holding us back and when we trust and when we just say do you know what it's not working where it is at the moment <laughs> at least let's try and see what is coming and you know you you obviously are on the other side of all of that so it was wonderful to to get inspired by your story so thank you so much for being here and for sharing it with us thank you thank you amazing thank you so much thank you